This video supported in part by... Playing VR, I tend to sweat. It gives me an edge. The King of Nerds happens to give me an edge, too. Let King of Nerds give you the edge. Bye, King of Nerds. Ever since I first posted my review for the At Games Atari 50th Anniversary Flashback Gold Unit, I've been playing with it quite a bit. I even did a follow-up video where we added a whole bunch of games to it, and I've had a lot more time to play with it. And the paddle controls are something that initially seemed okay to me. The more I played with them, I realized it wasn't just tight. And a few days ago, I even put a video up explaining how we aren't even getting analog control out of these things. It's being turned into digital controls. And we verified that using a test cart showing there was absolutely no analog data even making it to the game itself. Now, here's the thing. If control using the paddle felt right, we would not even have dug into this, right? Look, we wouldn't care if you MacGyver it with chewing gum and safety pins or whatever it takes. If paddle control felt right and didn't feel weird, we would not have even started digging. I know I would not have, but here's the thing. Previously, I have worked in the customer service of the tech sector, and I know it's unfair to say to at games, this control just feels weird because how do you approach and fix weird? You know, that you need something more real and something more tangible. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I am John and I am a Gen X Grown Up. And in this video, what I hope to do is put something quantifiable around the weird feeling that I experience with this paddle control. I've read from a lot of commenters and experienced myself that the way this problem kind of manifests is that control across the screen with the paddle does not feel smooth, consistent, and uniform. Like ideally, as you turn this knob, the, whatever you're moving across the screen, whether it be a paddle or a kaboom, you're catching bombs or whatever, that should move perfectly in relation to how far you're turning the paddle and that should be smooth and consistent. I knew that I wanted to be able to accurately measure how far I turn the paddle and how far the object on screen moves. But I don't have like any potentiometer tools or anything like that. So I came up with this, what I think is a creative way to get it done. So I took some painter's tape and put a mark at every one centimeter interval all the way down the tape. I then took that tape and wrapped it around the circumference of the At Games paddle controller and finally took one more little piece of tape made an arrow and put that on the top of the paddle. Now, what I have is an arrow that can indicate when I have rotated the paddle one centimeter in radial distance. Now, a paddle is typically about 330 degrees. What I have are 15 hash marks around the paddle. So that comes out to every centimeter being about 22 degrees of rotation. So now I can move the paddle at a measured distance and see how that equal distance is reflected on the object on screen. Now, as I said in the previous video, these at game paddle controls are really well made. And in fact, since they value them only about $10, they were 10 bucks more to get the gold versus the traditional, and you get these paddles, they're almost exactly like the originals, both in feel and uh, the buttons and controls and everything. And so I started out testing this on a real Atari. I plugged this into my Atari 2600 Junior, plugged in my real copy of Atari's Breakout and fired it up. Now, as I turn the paddle one centimeter at a time, I'm gonna mark on the screen where the paddle currently is. Now, don't be concerned that the first few and last few didn't move at all, that's normal. Games don't typically require you to turn that paddle the entire 330 degrees, they use kind of the middle range. What I'd like you to pay most attention to is just how evenly these numbers are spaced as you move your way across the screen. As you can see, these at game paddles work really well when they're talking to an original piece of hardware that reads the analog data as it was intended. Now, let's plug this same controller with my tape rig on it into the flashback gold. And same deal, I want you to notice the first few numbers just stack up on the side. They're not really moving the paddle. That's outside of the testing range. But then as the paddle starts to make its way across the screen, it starts out pretty even. It goes pretty well. And then when you get just past mid screen, the numbers get all bunched up. So rotating the paddle the same distance has dramatically reduced the distance that your player will travel on screen. These results really crystallized in my mind what I was feeling when I was playing a game with these paddles. Look, they were moving. There was a little latency because of the analog to digital translation, and maybe we can't get past that. But I think if movement was consistent, my brain would be able to adapt to that. But here's the problem, and just like you saw, first and foremost, there's the distance you travel. On an original Atari, it takes about five centimeters of rotation to make your way from the left to the right side of the screen. 
On the At Games, it takes about eight centimeters of distance to move from one side to the other. More importantly though, is the bunching up of data on the right side of the screen. And the way that's gonna manifest is uneven movement that you can't adapt to quickly enough. So if I'm on the right side of the screen, I've gotta turn that paddle really fast to get away from the right side of the screen. And once I get to the left, acceleration's gonna ramp up and I'm gonna overshoot what I was trying to get to. If I'm on the left side of the screen and I'm turning pretty slowly because it's nice and even, as soon as I get past the middle, it's gonna slow way down and I'm gonna undershoot where I was trying to go unless in my mind I can remember that I gotta crank it about three times as fast on that side. I think this really brings into focus and crystallizes exactly what the weird feeling is we were all feeling. It's not that the paddle doesn't turn, it's that the paddle turns and it's moving more slowly sometimes, moving faster sometimes. I would really like to know if my little experiment aligns with your findings and the way that you have perceived the behavior of the paddles. Many people have said this behavior has kind of been here since earlier flashbacks. I'd be curious to know if you kind of try to replicate this yourself if you have similar findings. It very well may be that together we're able to diagnose the root cause of this paddle problem. I'll pass that data on to At Games and that's gonna mean better products for all of us in the future. Look, I'm gonna throw some links over my shoulders here of previous videos I've done about the Flashback Gold. I really hope you found something to enjoy in this video, and I can't wait to talk to you next time. Bye-bye.